Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, I decided to share my memorization sheet. Now, in a few of my videos, I referenced this thing called a memorization sheet. So what exactly is that? The memorization sheet is something that I recommend to all of my students and my mentees to use to help memorize some of the difficult concepts of the common body of knowledge. And it's a sheet of paper that you're going to copy down the information over and over several times until you burn it into your memory. And the reason that I like doing that is because I've had several teachers tell me and my classmates as we're learning this stuff to create a brain dump sheet or something like that. And a brain dump sheet is basically where you cram a bunch of stuff and then just before you actually start taking the exam, you're supposed to write this stuff down on your whiteboard. But what I found was in the process of trying to memorize stuff for my whiteboard brain dump is that I actually memorized the stuff in the process and I didn't need to write anything down. I think the only thing that I wrote down was the, the Fasadir, where the heck is it? That was the only thing I wrote down on my whiteboard and I didn't actually write it down until I came across a question that was about change management because I had everything else memorized. So I recommend doing this because it's going to help you understand the material and it's also going to help you memorize the steps and the process. Now this isn't, this isn't a sheet that's going to help you memorize everything in the common body of knowledge. It's just a sheet that's going to help you reference and it's a good place to start maybe. So what you can do is you can take my memorization sheet and you can use it for your own and you can add to it, you can subtract from it. It's up to you really what you want to do with this. So I just thought I'd share and let's go over this real quick. Okay, so the first thing, the first mnemonic, and these are all mnemonics and little tricks to help you memorize, are the privacy tenets. And again, there's this phrase that says, and I believe that I have a video on this on almost all of these. If not, I'll do, th I'll do some in the future. So this one is please acquire or reveal some donuts. And you know, if this seems campy or cheesy, it's, it's because I don't have my images here. This is just the memorization sheet that you should copy down to help you memorize. So the PLS is the please, and you have the first letter here for each word of the, of the acronym. So this actually should be PLS, acquire or reveal some donuts. And then you have participation limitation scope. And I would even copy down the definition because it's not just about knowing the tenets themselves. It's about understanding what's in the tenet and what the tenet means. So we have this here <clears throat> and then you have the OSI model, which was one of the more difficult concepts for me. And so I came up with this, this acronym, everybody has their own, but people don't need to snap photos anymore. And of course, thanks to smartphones. And then you basically are going to start with the physical layer going up. So if you don't know what the OSI model is, I recommend watching another video on it. I have another video that talks about the layers and what they mean. And then you have these, these different things that you'll need to know for the exam. You have the, the PDU, you have the layer for the OSI model, you have the title, and then you have the corresponding TCP IP model. So again, here's the please don't, uh, I'm sorry, uh, people don't need to snap photos anymore. And then you have this one, the big feet point straight downwards for the PDU. And then you have the TCP IP over here which is uh, NITA, N, N2, A3, I believe it is. Uh, yes, down here, N2, A3 with IT in the middle because you work in the IT security field. For security awareness, you're going to try, you're going to write down these three, education, training, and awareness, formal, semi-formal, casual. Evaluation of the security awareness is going to be formal, just like education is formal, the E's match. BCDR concepts are a little vague, another gray area that was difficult for me to understand. So copy this down, that'll help you to understand that. Uh, penetration testing in the internal and external. Uh, this, this, little, uh, this, this little table that I came up with isn't really super straightforward, but it helps you to understand the differences between the two and also the differences between internal and external and how white hat and both black hat can both be either overt covert or internal, external, so on and so forth. I think I have another video on that as well. Your RP cart, your recovery components. Um, and then these, these silly phrases that are going to help you to understand what the security differences between the security controls are. So scoping is subtracting, tailoring is tuning and supplementing is supplanting. And then you have your cryptography services. This will help you to understand that. 
And then this one was really helpful for me, the Bell Lapadula, Lapadula. I don't know how to pronounce that correctly. No read up, no write down. That's really the only thing you had to memorize because everything else, Biba has the I. You're going to match the I with integrity. Same thing with Clark Wilson. Wilson has the I integrity. Brewer Nash is the wall, conflict of interest, Chinese wall. And then you have the properties, simple equals read and star equals write. And if you, I don't know if that happens with the new notepad, but if you open up a notepad and then you modify it, there's a little star indicating that you need to save it, meaning you modified it. So star equals write and simple equals read. So memorize that because you might have the simple security principle, which means read, no read up or no whatever it is. Um, I have my notes in front of me, but, and then you have the star principle. The, the uh, You're never going to get a simple star principle, but you'll get a simple security or a star security principle. You have your asset classification process. Make sure you understand what happens at each step uh, or each component of this process. Same thing with asset protection. These are different things, classification and protection process, although there's a little bit of overlap. That's always the case, unfortunately. Remnants, all this stuff, these silly little things really, really help, will help you on the practice questions. And then you have your type one error, type two error. Again, I have a video on all of these. You have uh, the RR, which is the right person rejected. And then you just remember that far, the number two, type two error is farther farther from zero than the number one. Pen testing, uh, again, I think that's part of my table up there. So I don't know why that was written. Uh, anyway, just copy this stuff down. You have the phases of the incident management, drum roll. Investigation methods, aim at the target. Then you have your backups, your differentials, your full and your incrementals. And then you have your raid levels here. You have uh, your asymmetric types and every everything else will be symmetric. And if this is from Cybrary, uh, I don't take credit for that one. The SDLC. This is a crazy one. And so came up with this, please fry some dead animals to catch the right man. Because you've all heard the phrase that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. So there, I do have a video on this as well. And this has each of the steps along with what happens. So it's important to understand that you have your ERGMO, your software capability maturity model. Change management process. This is the one that I, the only one that I actually wrote down when I came across the question, then you have the difference between due diligence and due care. Just remember that due diligence is before decisions. That's your research. And then your due care is going to be the decisions that you make, the actions that you do and the prudent person rule. All right. Covert channels, the V matches the V in violating security policy. And then the, all the other double O's are good unless they're left in, then they're bad. So of course you can take this and you can do something with it. You can add to it. You can subtract from it. If you want to make recommendations, I'm welcome. And I'm open to that as well. I will put a link in the description of this video and you're welcome to use this however you want. Best of luck to you on the exam. And if you want some really good practice questions, head over to cissprep.net and sign up. It's uh, currently, well, I'm not going to say the price because it could go up in the future. I don't know. It just depends on how many questions that we are able to come up with in the, in the next little while. And keep in mind that the CBK is going to refresh in, I believe, March or April of next year. So best of luck again in your studies. Thanks and have a great day.